Okay. The unit that we just, the part we just finished was on how to add, subtract, find area, I'm sorry, find perimeter, combine like terms using polynomials. Now we're going to start multiplying. Now it says multiplying monomials. That's because right now I'm multiplying, like, it's almost like I'm distributing. And instead of just distributing a number, I might also be distributing some letters. Okay? But I'm not doing, multiplying binomials is next week, and that's a different topic. Um, so first we want to go over some kind of like prerequisites, some ground rules, so to speak, some things, some prior stuff that you should know. So we have a little bit of vocabulary over here. When we talk about area and about shapes, the first thing we need, need to recognize is that the math words for multiplying, we take factor times factor equals product. So factor times factor equals product. So if I multiply two factors together, they're going to result in a product. Okay. Now, in a real-world application, and one of our most common real-world applications of multiplying polynomials and binomials is area. In a, this real-world application, we call the sides, instead of calling them factors in the real world, we call those dimensions. Dimensions are the parts of shapes that we measure. So, like, for example, my classroom is, I don't know, like 18 bricks by 20 bricks. So I'm not using inches. I might be using feet. Um, a, you know, it's something that we measure, length, width. Height. Area is something that we calculate using the length and width that we've measured. Okay? So you will be asked questions about what does, like if I gave you something and said, okay, like if I gave you something like this and I said, what are the dimensions? What's the, what's the, what's the area? You would have to recognize that the side lengths are the dimensions and when I multiply them together, that's when I'm going to get the area. Okay, so the, just make sure that you understand it, and that the factors multiply to give, or, give us a product. Okay, next thing we need to talk about is some exponent vocabulary because we're really going to be start moving into exponents. We're going to be manipulating exponents of variables now, so we need to make sure we understand them. So first of all, um, let's talk about the actual parts of an exponent. Okay, so right here, the part on the bottom is pretty appropriately called the base. Okay, the base of the exponent. So it's the base. That's the number that I'm multiplying. And exponents are repeated multiplication. That's what they are. So multiplying is repeated addition. Exponents are repeated multiplication. That's what they mean. So 2 is the number that I'm multiplying repeatedly. 3 is what we call the exponent. Sometimes they call it the power. Okay. And as we talked about in our previous notes, it's also called the degree. Okay. So we take a base and we multiply it by itself the number of times the exponent specifies. So this is 2 to the third. That means I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to multiply it by itself three times. So 2 times 2 times 2. And then when I do that, I get a final answer of 8. These actual part, these different representations also have names. We call this one exponential form. Okay. We call this one expanded form, and we call this one standard form. But it's basically like your final answer. Standard form is just what is the final answer that you get. Okay? So that's our exponent vocabulary. All right, so we need to make sure that we know these. I'm not going to ask you about expanded, exponential, standard, but we are going to, when, at, when we work through these prog pro problems, our process is going to be to start at exponent, exponential form, go into expanded form, then regroup it, and then compress it back into standard form or the final answer. Okay? Next thing we need to talk about, and this is really, really important, x to the third is not the same thing as 3x. Okay? So x to the third is x times x times x. Exponents, remember, exponents are repeated multiplication. So think of it as like I have x to the first times x to the first times x to the first. I'm kind of changing, I'm transforming it by changing the exponent because I'm, I'm, this x to the third shows that I multiplied that x three times. Okay. So again, if I'm multiplying the same base, I'm changing my exponents. Okay. Now let's look at 3x. 3x is the same thing as x plus x plus x because remember, multiplication is repeated addition 
exponents are repeated multiplication. So all I'm doing is I'm showing that I have 1x plus 1x plus 1x, and that turned into 3x, 3x's. So in this case, when I add with the same base, my coefficients change. Okay, and we can only add things that have the same base. And the reason for that is, if they don't have the same base, they're not like terms. We just got done combining like terms. Well, if I try to add an x and an x squared, they don't have like terms, so I can't add them at all. So I can't say, you know, if I have 1x plus 1x plus 1x squared, that I have 3x square x. No, I can't combine them if they don't have the same um, if they don't have the same base, but I can multiply things with different bases, and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit, okay? Um, so that's our prior knowledge. So let's talk about what we're actually looking at today, which is area and multiplication. Okay, so if we look at this, forget all these questions. I don't care about the, so how do I find the area of this shape? Well, what I do is the same thing I've been doing since like freaking second grade is I've been multiplying the sides together, okay? So I've been doing length times width, or when you got into middle school, it might have changed a little bit, so it said base times height. But what I'm doing is I'm taking one side times the other. When I multiply those together, I get 96. And when I multiply area, my measurement, my unit changes from inches to square inches. It changes from inches to square inches. That does not mean that I'm squaring the 96. Or that I'm it means that instead of being 8 by 12, I need 96 little 1 inch size squares to fill this in. If it was to the third power, which is volume, I would need 96 little cubes to fill in the shape. Okay, so that's all the square inches means. All right, so this is our classic elementary school multiplication. So now let's get over here. This is what we're about to do. Now we already did some of this yesterday. Okay, forget all those questions. To find the area of this one, I would say length times width. And I could technically put both of those in parentheses because I'm doing the length times the width. When I'm dealing with any kind of anything other than a binomial, a monomial, it has to be in parentheses because I'm not just multiplying by the 2x. I'm multiplying by this whole expression. So when I multiply by anything, binomial or higher, two terms or higher, I have to put it in parentheses. Okay, well we know what to do with this, right? We just distribute the four to everything inside. Four times two x, sorry, is eight x. Four times one is plus four. We know what to do with this. We did this in class. This though we haven't done. So if I, and I'm gonna put that in parentheses, I have 10 x, which is my length, times five x plus two, which is my width. Now we're gonna talk about what to do with that, okay? So let's take a little step back and let's talk um, because this is going to kind of help us figure out what to do when we see stuff like this, all right? So if we have like right here, we have 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, but it's more specifically, it's 3 squared, which is the same thing as 9. 4 times 4 is 4 squared, which is the same thing as 16. This is 5 squared, which is the same thing as 25. 6 squared, which is the same thing as 36, and so on. What if I don't know what the number is? and it's x. Well, if 6 times 6 is 6 squared and 5 times 5 is 5 squared, then x times x must be x squared because there's two of them. All right, so, okay, that's great. What if instead of x times x being x squared, what if I had um, x times x squared? What about that? Well, Let's think about how I could expand that out, right? Because I have this expanded, we talked about expanded form. Well, could I say x times x times x, right? Because isn't x squared the same thing as x times x? Well, how many x's do I have now? I've got three x's. Well, that's x to the third. And remember, I've got one, two, three. Since I'm multiplying them, I'm changing the exponents, okay? This is the new part, this right here. All of this you've done before. This right here is the new part. So let's talk about what that's going to look like. So I have 3x. So the strategy is, here's our strategy. I'm going to write it down here. We're going to expand, regroup, 
compress. This is also the same strategy we're going to use when we divide. Expand, regroup, compress. Okay? So, I mean, this one's kind of already expanded, right? It's 3x. Well, that's 3x, right? Not complicated. 3 times y is 3, I'm sorry, 4 times y is 4y, right? Well, now I got this going on, right? So this I'm going to expand. I'm going to, this is the first one we're going to see that looks like our process. So the first step of expand, so I'm going to do this one over here. Okay, so I have 3x times 2y. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand them. So I'm going to write them with multiplication signs between them. So it's like a boof, I'm blowing them up. So 3 times x times 2 times y. That's the first step, expand. Now I'm going to regroup them. So I'm going to put all the things that are the same together. So we always start with our, when we, when we, when we put together a monomial, we always start with the coefficient. So I have 3 times 2 in my first group. And then we list our variables in alphabetical order. So then I'm going to have my x and my y. And now I compress them back together. 3 times 2 is 6. I have an x and a y. So the answer is 6xy. And this is my new term type. I have 6xy's. Okay? Let's look at this one. Okay? This one starts just like this one up here does. Okay, and we're going to do this one right here. We have, actually, real quick, let's, let's kind of take a little step back. Let's jump down to this one real quick, okay? We're going to do this one down here. So for this one, okay, so this is kind of like this one, except now I've got x's and x squareds, and it's kind of like this one over here. Okay, so I have 5x, well, actually, I'm going to take out the parentheses, so I have, I'm expanding right now. So I have 5 times x times x times x. When I put that, there's my group, there's my expansion. Now I'm going to compress it back together. 5 times x to the third. Okay, so let's see, let's look at this one. This one is kind of the most complicated one we're going to see. So we have 4y times x plus 2. So the first step is going to be distributing. So we're going to say 4y times x. We're going to rewrite it not multiplying anything together, plus 4y times 2. So see, all I did was multiply it. Now we do the same thing. We expand, regroup, compress. So I have 4 times y times x plus 4 times y times 2. I regroup. 4 is in my first one. x is next. y is last. In this one, I have 4 times 2 in my first one. I don't have an x, but I got a y. So I've expanded, I've regrouped, now I'm going to compress. 4xy plus 4 times 2 is 8y. And that is my final answer right there. I can't combine them because I have xy's and y's and they're not the same thing, so I can't combine it any further. Okay? We're going to work on this more in class on Monday. Have a good weekend.